So it's opinion piece today. Something that popped up in the last 24 hours or so is the question of whether Formula One has become too reliant on street tracks and whether that in turn is messing with the racing. It's an interesting question because it's weird to see how things have progressed in the almost 30 years I've been watching motorsport in some capacity. So when I started watching Formula One in sort of 94, 95, there was really Monaco and Adelaide, two full up proper full on street circuits. For 1996, Adelaide was replaced with Albert Park. Spa was sort of a hybrid, I guess, Montreal as well, but really, those were the two true street circuits. Now, though, it seems every new addition to the F1 calendar is some sort of lined with walls, shoehorned in type of deal. Jeddah, Miami, Sochi, Baku, Singapore, Vegas. As motorsport.com pointed out, these circuits are squeezed into an existing area, so any chances of extended straights or braking zones or a chance to have a challenging sequence of corners like maggots and beckets that can exploit the topography of the ground, they're just not doable because this building is there, that river is here, there's the boundaries of the land on which the circuit can be built, in the case of Sochi which was built around the Winter Olympic Park. And typically what you end up with is a bunch of circuits with 90 degree right-handers that don't really do a lot. Detroit, Phoenix, Baku, Singapore, Valencia to an extent. At least in Jeddah's case it's more of a wiggly line than being drawn using a set square, even if the surface is smoother than a snooker table. And that's also part of the problem, because of the different ways these circuits are all put together, the tyres can't keep up, and this is something I hadn't realised until it was pointed out. Pirelli has five homologated compounds it has to use across the whole calendar. There's no opportunity there to bring a specific construction of tyre for each individual circuit. There's no ultra mega soft Monaco special set that works specifically for that track to allow the strategies to manifest themselves. But then as Pirelli explains, Monaco is different to Baku, Baku is different to Melbourne, Melbourne is different to Singapore, Singapore is different to Jeddah, Jeddah is different to Miami, Miami is different to Vegas. Not just in the way of the tarmac surface, but also the climates to factor in as well. So Pirelli is bringing the same tyres to Baku that it will take to Australia or Brazil or Spa, and because the tarmac is X, the climate is Y, and the nature of the corners is Z, throw in a safety car and you've got what you got at Baku earlier this year. Cars able to roll around making the tyres last 997 laps. And it also doesn't help matters that the current cars are big, heavy, and have to be stiffly sprung to maintain the ground effect. And on top of this, they're starting to produce too much downforce, so it's starting to become too difficult to follow again. So drivers are having to maintain gaps to save the tyres and rely more on the DRS to get closer or get by than ever before. So when it adds up, you get the parades, and I explained this a bit more in the Baku video earlier this year after that Grand Prix. And because the cars are too stiffly sprung, you only have one groove. So corners that once had two ways to get through now only have one. And at that point, it feels like you might as well just race scale extra instead. Because the cars in the current form can't hit the curbs in the same way that the 2021 cars could or the 2016 cars could. They have to basically take this line and this line only, go over this bump one way only. Unlike at somewhere like Silverstone where turns 3, 4, Brooklands and Luffield seem to be the last place on earth where two or three lines are viable for a Formula 1 car. You also have the constant threat to older, established, historic and loved circuits such as Spa and Silverstone, and then there's rumour after rumour of a race here that'll be a street race, and a race there that'll also be a street race. Rumours of a race in London because, pfft, reasons, and there's been rumours of a street race in Nice to replace the Grand Prix at Paul Ricard. The way it looks is more and more of that shift to holding a race close to a city centre to drive fan engagement more than anything else. Seeing all this stuff about how everybody's been priced out of the Vegas street race is an example, and how Formula 1 wants to shoe in these uninspiring street circuits at the expense of older and or, in inverted commas, proper circuits to put on a show more than a race that could, with the right nudging in the right direction of a rule set, put on that show naturally. A show that everybody will watch at home because grandstand tickets are far out of their reach. And in the case of Jeddah, you've got a walled off race at night where you can't even see the city, and the whole thing feels like a Death Star trench run. And that's not to say that a street circuit doesn't have its advantages. It means that a particular city is shown off to the world and can generate tourism. People that are there in that city to watch that Grand Prix can do things in that city in between sessions. And in a modern world where circuits have been built many miles and population centres, that can be an upside to things. You're in one place and don't have to travel particularly far. The downside is, 
There's a track with a rich history or a fun layout elsewhere in the world that's sitting there wondering what the hell it has to do to get in on the act. And maybe that's another reason why there's tracks seemingly heading more and more towards cities in the case of Formula 1. That being that because Formula 1 cars don't produce anywhere near the amount of noise they used to, it's a more viable option. The NIMBYs aren't going to get as upset. It is, after all, why Formula E races on those sorts of circuits, but at least Formula E has the whole electric cars in city centres thing going about it. There's probably no way during the V10 and V8 eras that this many street circuits would have been a thing, and it also works out cheaper to build a circuit like Jeddah or Miami, because it's only going to be used for one series once a year. No other racing circuit on the planet is going near it, so it means there's no circuit sitting around there gathering dust for the remaining 51 weekends of the year because these tracks are being built in countries where domestic racing isn't really a big thing. So a Jeddery, montreal y sort of not permanent, semi-permanent if you want to call it that type of circuit for the only racing series that comes to the country once a year seems a more cost-effective option. F1's commercial rights holders want to bring it as close to the fans as possible, but at this point it feels a bit too close. Just bring it a little close. Because in the last few years there's been rumours of a street circuit in London, Copenhagen, Los Angeles and Berlin. And they'd all have to replace something on the calendar because some of these races like Jeddah and Qatar and places like that, they're on 10 year deals. And while there's these tracks supposedly queuing up to get in on the Formula 1 calendar, there's the likes of Kai Alami trying to make as much noise as possible too. A track that's been on before and wants to be on again. 30 years since it was last on the calendar. But let me know what you think. Is it too saturated with street circuits or is there room for more? Do you enjoy street circuits? Do they help drive the engagement in terms of fans getting to these events? Let me know in the comments and get a discussion going. It is why these sorts of videos exist. And while scrolling down, make sure you like the video if you did like the video and thought I made some good points for more stuff like this or anything I do on the channel, then subscribe and get the bell on so you never miss out. Massive thanks to the people of Patreon who continue to support this channel. If you want to help out in a more personal fashion, you can do so by following the link in the description, where there's also links to Discord, socials, and other bits and pieces. Well, the super thanks if you just want to buy me a cold drink. So until next time, I've been Aidan Mord. Have a great day wherever you are, and goodbye.